morning and welcome to St. Patrick's Catholic Church as we celebrate the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand for our entrance hymn. Our entrance song this morning is number 315, The God of All Grace. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me before our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. In those days, the princes said to the king, Jeremiah ought to be put to death. He is demoralizing the soldiers who are left in this city and all the people by speaking such things to them. He is not interested in the welfare of our people, but in their ruin. King Zedekiah answered, He is in your power, for the king could do nothing with them. And so they took Jeremiah and threw him into the cistern of Prince Melchiah, which was in the quarters of the guard, letting him down with ropes. There was no water in the cistern, only mud, and Jeremiah sank into the mud. Ebedmelech, a court official, went there from the palace and said to him, The Lord King, these men have been at fault in all they have done to the prophet Jeremiah in casting him into the cistern. He will die of famine on the spot, for there is no more food in the city. Then the king ordered Ebedmelech, the Cushite, to take three men along with him and draw the prophet Jeremiah out of the cistern before he should die. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us rid ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us and persevere in running the race that lies before us while keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the leader and perfecter of faith. For the sake of the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising its shame, and has taken his seat at the right of the throne of God. Consider how he endured such opposition from sinners, in order that you may not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. The word of the Lord. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two, and two against three. A father will be divided against his son, and a son against his father, a mother against her daughter, and a daughter against her mother, a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a book by Douglas Adams that was recently made into a movie a few years ago, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and it is admittedly a very odd book and movie, but it's that kind of odd humor that I really enjoy. Uh, Very British, and that's just my style. But there's a dialogue in that movie that just makes me think a lot of times. And one character is talking to another, and he says, you know, I'd rather be happy than right any day. And the other one says to him, well, are you? No, that's where it all falls apart, isn't it? Isn't that true for so many people? I, want, I just want to be happy. And if this makes me happy, I'm going to go for it. That's kind of the mentality of our society. That, you know, I know you don't like it, but it works for me. And I, I, it's good. It's good. I'm happy. I'm, I'm content with that. In our gospel, in our readings today, we see that the prophets and those who are preaching the good news are not content with just saying it's enough. If you're happy, go for it. You know one of my least favorite sayings? What would Jesus do? I mean, it doesn't make sense for a priest not to like that, does it? But my issue with it is not the saying itself, but that the people who say it don't know what Jesus actually said or did. If they would read the gospel, they would have a totally different view of what Jesus is about. Jesus does not walk by injustice and say, 
well, if you're happy, you know, go, to, go for it. He calls people out. He turns to the Pharisees and he says, you hypocrites. You lay burdens on people without lifting a finger to help them. You brood of vipers. He looks at the money changers in the temple and says, you are profaning the house of God. And he turns over their tables and drives them out. Even the woman caught in adultery, where Jesus famously says, let he who is without sin cast the first stone, he doesn't say that what she did was okay. He says, go and sin no more. Acknowledging that she was in error, but saying that we're not to judge the person. Jesus Christ is not just some feel-good spiritual guru who's just here to make you feel better about the crappy things in your life. That's not who he is. Jesus came to save us from those things, to change the way we see the world, to light our hearts on fire for something better. And it hurts sometimes. Jesus calls us and challenges us and stretches us to acknowledge and know the truth, to follow what is truly good and right, which he knows better than anyone, because he created us. There is a natural law. There is good and evil. And as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ, we need to stand up and say that. That's the fire that Jesus is talking about. He doesn't want us to be lukewarm about the awful things in our world or just to walk by evil and say, well, I'm glad that's not me. He wants us to be like him, on fire with love, saying, I want what's good for you, and this is not it. Think about it. If all of the Christians in the world would stand up and say abortion is wrong, it is the taking of an innocent human life and it needs to stop. If we stood up as a people and said the death penalty is wrong, our God teaches forgiveness, not retribution, and wants to offer everyone the chance to repent. If we stood up and said our elderly and our infirmed have value, they are people, and euthanasia is taking an innocent life, You could go on and on to the conditions of immigrant camps or unjust labor laws or what have you. But I dare say Jesus would not look at them and say, well, if it makes you happy, if you think it's okay, he would challenge them. He would challenge us and say, this isn't right. This isn't good for you. I love you enough to tell you that you need to change. Something needs to change. It's not a popular message by any means, but it's one that needs to be said and heard. Think about the prophet Jeremiah. If you've ever read the book, and I I highly encourage you to sit down and read the book, it'll take a little while. It's a long book, and it takes a little bit to get through it. Jeremiah is a prophet called by God to deliver a very unpopular message. The Babylonians are invading because you've been bad, and you should just accept it. Don't fight them. Give in. You're going into exile. What would you do if I came up here and told you the Russians are coming and we deserve this, so just let them come right through? I don't think I'd make it to the parking lot after Mass. (laughs) And Jeremiah didn't get off easy. People didn't like him. From the very beginning, the first chapter, he says, he tries to get out of it. Lord, I am too young. I don't know how to speak. All of these excuses. And God says, no, you are my messenger. I need this to be heard. Jeremiah later in chapter 20 says, I have, I'm tired of being treated like garbage. I'm tired of the way people respond to me. And I say again and again that I'm not going to speak your words anymore. But they're like a fire burning within me and I can't hold them in. The truth needs to be heard. He suffered for the message, but knew that he was delivering it out of love and good for the people. And he continued his mission. Think of Jesus Christ. He came to save us from sin, not to make it acceptable, to say it's okay, to comfort us, but to bring us to something better. And what happened to him? He was publicly ridiculed, mocked, and crucified. And he bore it because he knew it was for our good, to show us a better way. That is true love. And yes, it was divisive. Jesus wasn't crucified because he just said nice things to people. We wouldn't do that to somebody. He was crucified because he challenged the status quo. He challenged the society and said, you can be better. 
and this is how. And people didn't want to hear it. But that is what it means to be a Christian, to follow Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way to true happiness, to eternal life, and his truth is the truth for all of us, not just for some or if we think it's nice. It is true, and we need to accept it, to stand up for it, and to proclaim it to those who need to hear it, which starts with our own hearts. Each of us, I, I dare say, is challenged by some aspect of scripture, by some aspect of Jesus' message. It makes us uncomfortable. It makes us think, I don't know if I can do that. But those are precisely the areas in which we need to grow so that we can love. We don't proclaim this message out of condemnation of the person. We proclaim it out of love because we want what's good for them. We want them to be happy. We want them to know peace and the love that God offers each and every one of us. It is challenging, but it's worth it. St. Paul talks about the great cloud of witnesses that have gone before us. Think of all the saints who have struggled, who have suffered, but who have changed the world for the better. It doesn't take long to bring one or two to mind. And we are called to be that as well. People who suffer for what is right and good. And it will be hard at times, but I'd rather sleep well at night knowing I'm doing the Lord's work than wonder and toss and turn because I'm giving in to the world. I would rather attain the joys of heaven than the mere status quo of this world, getting by and not ruffling any feathers. That's what it means to be a Christian. And that's what Jesus is calling us to today. To know his saving power, to accept his message, and to have our hearts on fire for it so that it changes the world and burns out those things that need to go away so that we can be truly happy. Brothers and sisters, would you rather be happy or right? Jesus shows us a different way, that there is no choice between the two. But in following him, the truth, if we are right, it leads us to happiness, to the kingdom of heaven, which, as our opening prayer says, is beyond any human desire or anything that this world can offer us. Let us look to our Lord today who comes to us again in this Eucharist. Let us rededicate ourselves to his mission and let us ask for the grace to accept the fullness of truth, life, and the way that he offers to us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things remain, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in virgin Mary, and became a man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of and the life of the world. In faith we turn to our loving God, who sent his only Son to save us from sin, and ask him to continue to help us with our prayers of need and petition. For the Holy Church of God, that they may all be afire with love of God and his gospel, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For our country, that we may appreciate God's gifts of life, love, and liberty, and that we may defend and protect that's the gifts for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families, that they may be more closely united in sincere love of God and of each other. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For persecuted Christians around the world, that they may courageously keep the faith and that their example may inspire others to know, love, and serve our God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the sick of the suff and the suffering, for those suffering from addiction or any kind of mental illness, that they may find peace in the knowledge of the love of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died and gone before us in faith, that they may rest from their labors and enjoy their eternal reward, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and loving God, you held nothing back in coming to our salvation, and you continue to aid us on our journey to you. And so we come to you in faith, asking that you hear and answer these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song for the preparation of the gifts is number 680. The Lord is my light.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accepts sacrifice and tributes. The praise and glory of his name. For our good and good all things holy to church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising to the sun, of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy of the you should enter into my heart. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion song is number 517, The Eyes and Hands of Christ.
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Just a couple of announcements this morning. Um, this is the last weekend for collecting school supplies, and date night is tonight, Sunday, at, at 5.30, I'm sorry, 5.30 p.m. here at St. Patrick's. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our parting song is number 712, Lift High the Cross. <laughs>